Okay, welcome back. So last week we finished up talking about opals. We talked a little bit about the pricing on them. This week I'm going to start talking about the quartz variety. So the first thing that you should know is that quartz has a ton of different stones that fall under its classification. A lot of you have probably heard of like amethyst and citrine and rose quartz. All of those are quartz and all of those will have their own separate videos. So if you're confused about the difference between those, don't be. You won't be confused for long. Just a general introduction about quartz today. I wanted to talk a little bit about its chemical structure and about, you know, its commonality, where it's found, stuff like that. So I'm just going to dive right in. The chemical structure of quartz is silicon dioxide, SiO2. Um, this means that quartz is pretty easy to find because these are really common chemicals and it's easy to find silicon and dioxide growing together in nature. So quartz is an incredibly common crystal, which is really nice actually, because that makes it super affordable as well. And as I talk a little bit more about each colored stone, I will talk about the pricing on that. So don't get too upset if I don't get around to that today. Quartz forms in a very specific crystal pattern. So like when you find it in nature, Typically, you will see it, and it's formed in what's called a trigonal crystal pattern, and I'll attach a photo of that. Um, a lot of people, I've noticed in recent years, people will wear necklaces with, like, quartz crystals hanging from them, and they go kind of straight down and come to a point like a pencil, and they do form that way naturally. So I think a lot of those necklaces are probably just acrylic, but, you know, that is that is what quartz would look like if you found it in nature. Um... And side note, actually, I learned the other day with a relative who just had a baby that infant anti-gas formula is SiO2. So you could argue that when babies have gas, we feed them quartz. And I thought that was interesting to know. That's all. So quartz, gems typically, opals, quartz, diamonds, rubies, they are classified on what we call a hardness scale. Diamond being the hardest and things like mica or talc being the softest, which means you could flake it off and scratch it with your fingernail. Diamonds, there's nothing that we know of in this world yet that can scratch a diamond. And that scale is 1 to 10, 10 being a diamond. Quartz falls at about a 7. So that means that it's okay to put in jewelry. If you have jewelry with quartz in it, you'll want to be really careful because it could get scratched, it could get chipped off a little bit, but it's not super likely. So again, this is one of those things where you'd want to put it in a necklace or earrings before you put it in a bracelet or in a ring, just to be on the safe side. If you do put it in something like that, you'll probably be fine. It just may get scratched up over time. Quartz can be totally transparent. You can see through it as well as you could see through a glass window pane, or it can be totally opaque. It can look like a solid rock and it could be anything in between as well and that's what's kind of nice about it it kind of just depends on where it grows and what other chemicals it's exposed to besides that silicon dioxide as it grows that's what will affect its color that's what will affect its transparency and everything and quartz comes in tons of colors you can have blackish gray quartz you can have it in pink you can find it in purple or in yellow or in blue you can find clear quartz with other minerals like stuck inside it. These are usually called impurities or intrusions. And that can produce some really cool looking stuff actually. And I will be talking about that in future videos as well. And like I said, most of these colored stones, these colored varieties of quartz will have their own videos because they're super popular. And so I think people are going to want a little bit more detail about those. But that is the main overview of quartz. That's everything you need to know about the base formula, the base mineral. And then starting next week, we will get more into that. We'll talk about some of the color varieties. We'll talk about pricing and durability for jewelry. So I will see you all next week.